welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. Original air date is May 28th, 1950, and the title is The Letter from the Grave. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. It's Hopalong Cassidy. <laughs> With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, The Letter from the Grave. The week's mail had lain on the table next to the cook stove all day. A couple of harness catalogs, a few bills, a fancy printed card announcing the arrival of a new horse doctor in Baker's Crossing, and the letter, an ordinary looking letter in a plain envelope postmarked a week or so before in Gold Run, Montana Territory. It was addressed to Hoppy, and there was something familiar in the handwriting, something that dug deep into his memory as he slit the envelope, took out the letter, and began to read. Dear Hoppy. I'm only writing you now because there's no one else I can turn to. I remember once down in Dodge, you told me to get word to you at the bar 20 if I ever found myself in a tight place. I'm in it now, so deep I don't think I'll get out of Gold Run alive. I can't say any more here. But if you meant what you said that day in Dodge, get up here on the gallop. Because, partner, I need you now. Your pal, Jack Bannock. Jack Bannock. That concern printer Kyle's is worse than a jackrabbit in a hot stove. If you want that critter broke, hop along, Cassidy, you can darn well top him yourself. I ain't a... Uh, uh, what's the matter, Hoppy? Tell Johnny to round up her bed road and get a pack horse ready. Pack horse? Uh, where we go? Montana. Place called Gold Run. Friend of mine's in trouble up there. Yeah? Who's that? Jack Bannock. I knew him when I was a kid, California. Down in Dodge City. One of the best friends I ever had. Funny hearing from him now, after all these years. Yeah? Uh, how long ago did he write? Postmark says a week ago. Date on the letter is... Hmm. Uh, what's the matter? The matter. It was written October 10th, 1873. Fifteen years ago. Letter written 15 years ago has at least settled one thing in Hoppy's mind. Jack Bannock is dead. But why did he die, California? What was he afraid of? You asking me? And the letter. We've had some pretty slow mail service around here, but 15 years. Yeah. <sighs> well, you might drop a line to the postmaster up there. Yeah, that's the sensible thing to do. It's silly to go up there now, five day ride. And there's plenty of work to be done around here. Sure. No time for us to be running off in a wild goose chase. That's right. And we probably wouldn't find out anything when we did get there. Now you're being sensible. Well, where are you going? Oh, why don't you walk out to the barn? Wait a minute. Yeah? Battle up that pack horse. Her, <laughs> her. Check just what I was about to do. <laughs> say any more here, but if you meant what you said that day in Dodge, get up here on the gallop, because, partner, I need you now. Your pal, Jack Bannock. Hmm. Never heard of him. Look at the date. October 10, 1873. Fifteen years ago. How long have you been postmaster here in Gold Run, Mr. Ryan? Uh, about five years. i come up from Cheyenne. Oh, Got any idea why it took that letter 15 years to get to me? Yep. Reckon I'm partly responsible myself. 
That letter from the sack of meal I uncovered a couple of weeks back. Uncovered? That's what I said. Know much about Montani, mister? Some. You ever heard of the Creed gang? No, can't say I have. Well, there was a bunch of outlaws who took over this country in late 72. And when I say outlaws, I mean the real article. Well, how are they so different? The Creed was organized. They had spies in the mines, spies in Virginia City, the Alder. Oh, the man never knew but what the grocerman and the kid who swept out the saloon was a creed. For the time, there wasn't one miner to get out of the whole section with his poke. Alive, that is. Some say the creeds killed a hundred, some say two. What's this got to do with the letter? Yes, I, I was coming to that. You see, we just knocked down the old Webster house where the creeds used to hold a meeting. When we tore it down, we found the sack of mail jammed in a hollow wall. So I just gathered her up and sent her on. Oh, I see. What happened to the creed? Oh, you know how it goes. Folks who stand for that kind of thing for just so long, and the first thing you know, they start oiling up their guns and the woods is suddenly full of vigilantes. I tell you what you do. Look up old Charlie Br- Borden. Well, who's he? Uh, what's from Mr. Hutchison. Uh, Hutchison? Yeah, he runs the hardware business in this section. Lives in the big house on the top of the hill in the main street. Charlie's kind of a handyman around the place. You think he might know something about Jack Bannock? I don't know, but there's a chance he might. He ain't never admitted it, you understand. But there was a time when the yards was eight to five down at Mulroney's pool parlor that Charlie was one of the creed. Then look out, the gold run. Hmm. Dang it. Why didn't I think of Charlie before? For what? There was a young girl in here yesterday asking questions about Jack Bannock. She had a letter the same as you. Bannock. B-A-N-N-O-C-K. John Michael. They called him Jack. Eh, Bannock, eh? You say he lived here? I understand he had a claim not far from here. I thought perhaps you might have a record of it, Mr. Gillis. Well, of course, this is a law office, Miss Nukin. Some of our business is in the mining field. We naturally have records of that. And I can't recollect the name Bannock. Have you checked the claim office? Yes, I've checked the claim office. They had a fire ten years ago. Lost all their records. Oh, yeah. yeah of course. And this claim was filed before the fire, eh? In 1873. I see. Uh, you knew this Bannock? Eh? I'm his niece. Oh, uh-huh. Now you're trying to locate Mr. Bannock, eh? No. You see, I'm pretty sure he's dead. It's about his claim. Listen, Matt, Kennedy wants his money right uh, now. Jeff. Huh? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I... Jeff, uh, this is Miss Sarah Newcomb, my, my partner, Jeff Lyson. How do you do, Mr. Lyson? Howdy, ma'am. Uh, Miss Newcomb is the niece of a man who had a claim here 15 years ago. Name of John Michael Bannock. Bannock? You mean she knows I... that? I... Just explained to Miss Newcomb we had no records of any Bannock in our files. Oh, gee. Well, what was I thinking of? Braddock. That's it. Uh, uh, Miles, Miles Braddock. Had a claim over an older girl. Here. Yeah. Well, uh, what can we do for you, Miss Bannock? Newcomb. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm having name trouble today. Yeah. I, uh, I think perhaps we might be able to help Miss Newcomb locate her uncle's claim. It's not a claim, actually. It's what he got out of it. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't understand. Were you here in 73, Mr. Gillis? Why, yes, but... Then you remember the creeds. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the creeds. My uncle must have known he couldn't get out of here with his gold, so... So, uh, what? So he put it away in a good, safe place. And, of course, you'd like to find it. That's right. Oh, uh, Miss Newcomb, I... Uh, perhaps now, if we saw this letter... Oh, I we... couldn't do that. Why not? Rather personal. The moment, anyway. I want to have a look around for myself. If I don't have any luck, I'll come back to you. Thanks, anyway. It's uh, been a pleasure, Miss Newton. If you run into anyone who might have heard of my uncle, I'd appreciate it if you... Send him to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Good day. Yeah, good day, ma'am. Why, well, you infernal idiot, you stupid blabbing men, come on. I, I, I didn't know, Matt. How was I? Oh, shut up. I was leading her by my nose when you opened your big mouth. I... Polly, get that file out of there. Here, here, Matt. Now, let's see. 
Bannock, eh? Uh, Bannock, John Michael Bannock. Morning Star Mine, west slope of Beaver Ridge, above junction of Alder Gulch and Little Creek. Get it there. Here it is. All right, let's see it. Uh, yeah. Here we are. Operated six months of 72, seven months of 73. Estimated net take, $80,000. Blind pocket, street panned out September 73. Uh, last note here says, Bannock preparing to leave October 5th. Creed's get Bannock? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You was a member, wasn't you? Listen, Larson. One of these days you're going to talk yourself right into a hole in the ground. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But the lady told us one thing, though. The Creed's never got that dust. I'm not buried it somewhere. Now she'll be nosing around town asking questions, and sooner or later, someone will steer into the little man. Yeah. I think we'd uh, better have a talk with it first. Charlie? Yeah. Charlie Borg. Yes, it is you say your name is? That's right, Charlie. Mr. Hutchison said I'd find you here in the tool shed. Oh. Trying to put Nick on this here consign side. Looks like someone was trying to cut barbed wire with it. <laughs> Look at them nicks there. Yeah. Yeah. What's eating you, Cassidy? I know you ain't coming to court just to be sociable. <laughs> I just wanted to test your memory, Charlie. You've uh, been living around here for some time, haven't you? Most of the year. Why? Ever hear of a kid named Jack Bannock? Yep. What happened to him? He worked a dream around here. Over on Beaver Ridge somewhere, I think. Along about, uh... Uh, about 73? Yeah, that's right. Then what? Oh, it took off somewhere. Just like that? Yeah. You sure of that? I ain't sure of nothing in this life. He was around one day, the next day he was You don't suppose the Creed might have had something to do with that, do you? What's your game, mister? Jack Bannock was one of the best friends I ever had. I think he was killed. I'd like to know who did it. Yeah. He's got credit for a lot of killings. Some of them they did, and some of them was done by folks who figured the Creed gang was right-handed to take the blame. Charlie? Yeah? yeah? What's up, Mr. Hutchison? You tangled up with the law again, Charlie? Yeah. Law? Well, there's a lawyer over at the house waiting to see you. Matt Gillis. Now, what in tarnation he be after? <laughs> you better go see. Dog, oh, I never talked to a lawyer yet without costing me money. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's quite a character. Been with me a long time now. Must be, let's see, ten years. How long have you been here, Mr. Hutchison? Quite a while. When I first hit the gold run country, it was town of five shacks in the saloon. I bet I know just what happened. I'm listening. You slung your pan on your back, took off into the hills, and stubbed your toe on a stack of nuggets as big as goose egg. Wrong. Yeah? Here's my little nugget. A jackknife. That's right. A little wonder. <laughs> Press the butt, and it's open. Snap, and it's closed. Well, that's what started me up in business. Well. Yeah, there are two ways to strike it at Rich on the gold rush, Cassidy. You get yourself a pick, go out to dig for it, or you let the other fella do it. Sell something to him. I thought the second way was the easiest. A little wonder, eh? Yep. All I had was a couple of knives and a lot of nerve. I took orders for it, collected money in advance until the spring of 74. They were ready to run me out of town when I finally made delivery. 74, eh? And you might have heard of Jack Bannock. What you ask that? Friend of mine. He was my friend, too. Any idea what happened to him? Yeah. He was murdered. Why? He had too much money. Any idea who? I think we'd better leave it there, Mr. Cassidy. Fifteen years have gone by. We couldn't get evidence then. We certainly can't get it now. What about the body? Creeds are pretty careful about things like that. No one ever found it. Hmm. Well, maybe I'm crazy digging around here fifteen years after it happened. I'd like to have a try at it anyway. Well, I'll give you all the help I can. Thanks. You can begin by answering that question I asked a minute ago. 
Who do you think killed him? You know, this can get us into trouble if it gets around and we can't back it up. Then... It won't get around. All right. He was a member of the Creeds. I suspect they kept all their records for them there. Is he still here? Sure. Running what he likes to call a legitimate business. Matter of fact, he's over at the house right now. You mean... That's right. The lawyer, Matt Gillis. It's after 11 o'clock, and Hoppy and California have returned to their room at the Gold Run Hotel. This is the craziest thing I've ever done. Oh, I ain't so sure about that, Hoppy. You've done some awful crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean trying to run down a murder 15 years old. We've got about as much chance as a feather in a hurricane. What about that lawyer, fella? Well, that's a good guess, but that's all it is. I don't know. Maybe we ought to... Hmm... Yes? That's right. And you must be the young lady who... I'm sorry. Will you come in, Miss Newcomb? This is my partner, California Carlson. Howdy, miss. How do you do? I'll come right to the point, Mr. Cassidy. I'd like to know what you're after. What do you mean? You've been all over town today asking questions about Jack Bannon. Well, I understand you've been doing the same thing. I have a right to. So have I. Have you? Sure. Take a look at this letter I have here. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Dear Hoppy, I'm only writing you now because... Oh, you... you just got this? That's right. Now, do you mind if I ask what you're up to? I'm Jack Bannock's niece. He wrote my mother a letter, too. Here. Hmm. Dear Helen, I struck it rich. Over 50,000 dust to date from our little morning star. I suppose we ought to feel like celebrating, but we don't. Finding an ore pocket and gold run these days is like signing your own death warrant. I won't say more, but if I'm not back by spring, you'll know what happened. Our dust is cashed away. Come here when the trouble's over. You'll find the key on the green gallows. Love, Jack. The green gallows? I've asked everyone. Nobody knows what it is. Hmm. Well, this was written to your mother. She passed away over five years ago. Oh, I see. And she and Jack were in this together? Why, no. Why do you say that? He says, we here, we don't feel like celebrating. Our dust is cashed away. Why, I never thought that. Did he have a partner? I don't know. <clears throat> what you make of it, Harvey? I think I was a little too pessimistic a while back, California. We might run this down yet. The money? Yes, and the murderer. I think if we find one, we've got the other. All right, hold the lantern higher, Charlie. We can't see what we're doing here. Right, come on, Larson, dig, dig. Well, that's useless, Matt. There's nothing here. But it's got to be here. Uh, Charlie. Yeah? What is it, Gillis? Are you sure she said green gallows? Yeah, green gallows. All right, it's got to be here, then. Push that shovel, Jeff. We've only got a couple of hours until dawn. You say this is it, Mr. Riley? Yep, this is her. The official gathers a gold run right here behind the jailhouse. Hmm. Was it ever painted green? Nope. None of our customers to date has been particular about color, so we just left her natural. Hoppy, maybe we ought to see the sheriff about this. You're seeing him right now. Uh, you? Yep. Postmaster, sheriff, also assistant coroner, deputy United States marshal, and half owner of the Blue Bell Drugstore. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful. <laughs> Man's got to make a living these days. Prices is awful. Bacon just went up to ten cents a pound. Hmm. How long have these gallows been here? As long as I've been around, more than five years. Have there ever been any others? Nope. Hmm. Well, this is mill lumber. I didn't get a sawmill around here until ten years ago. There must have been another gallow somewhere. There weren't, I tell you. What about the Creed Gang? You told me yourself they were strung up in 73. Not on no gallows. Well, where for the love of Mike? Tree. A tree. Green. Green gallows. Wait a minute. What tree? Big oak. Out on the Virginia State coat road. That's it. That's what he meant. Come on. Let's get a hold of Miss Newcomb. I want to take a look at that tree. <laughs> She 
must be in there. Said she'd be here at the hotel all afternoon. Never can tell about a woman. She might be clean back to Laramie by now. Miss Newcomb. Hmm. What's unlocked? Gosh, my, Miss Newcomb, what's happened? She's been hit on the head. Get some water, California. Yeah. Miss Newcomb. Go away. Go away. It's me, Hop Along Cassidy. What happened? Here you are, Hop. Here, here, take this. Hey. Oh, Mr. Cassidy. Tell me, what happened? I don't know. I opened the door. Someone was waiting for me. Someone hit me. I see. Well, what were they after? Look at her purse on the floor there. That's it. Where's the letter? Letter? Did you take it out of your purse, Miss Newcomb? No. That's what they came for, and that's what they got. I'll send the manager's wife up to look after you. Come on, California, let's go. We haven't got much time. Well, this is her, Cassidy. They tell me they used to sling a rope over that big limb there, and... Yeah? Looks like we're a little late, Hoppy. Yeah. Whoever it was sure did plow up the ground. That doesn't mean they found it. Why not? Jack never would have buried his dust here with stagecoaches passing by every day along with riders, mule teams, and who knows what else. Somebody spot that new turned up in a minute. Well, you know what the letter said. The key, it said, not the gold itself. What did he mean by the key? The key's on the green gallows. That's what it said. The key is on the... Wait a minute. He said it was on the green gallows, not under it. I'm afraid my poor old brains weren't cut out for puzzle games, boys. I'll have to... What are you looking up to there, Cassidy? Look up there, next to the crotch. Huh? Look where I'm pointing. All oh, I can see is a rat's nest and a sleepy jaybird. What's it? Oh, yeah. There's something nailed to the limb up there. Give me a boost. I'm going up. Can you get to a topic? Yeah. Just a second now. <clears throat> Ah. What is it? What is it? An old rusty six-gun nailed to the trunk here. What do you reckon that means? Throw your rope over that branch, California. But first... Pull it aside. I want to try something. All right. Here she comes. That's it. Now pull on it. Enough? That's good. What in thunder are you up to? I want to line up the sight on this thing. Wait a minute now. What's well, pointing across the canyon there, at the base of that big boulder? It's... Uh-oh. What is it? Stand back, I'm dropping down. What's the matter, Hoppy? The sight points to the other side of the ravine. There's a rock face with a black streak through it. Let's go. Wait a minute. Huh? We'd better circle around and come in from the other ridge. There's someone over there digging right now. Key to Jack Bannock's gold cash, a rusty six-gun nailed high on a tree he called the Green Gallows, has led Hoppy, California, and Sheriff Riley to the crest of a ridge on the other side of the canyon. They lie there, listen. He stopped digging. Must have got down to it. Riley. Yeah? Circle around the other side of the boulder. We'll get down this way. All right. Let me, California. You betcha. He's down in the hole. Come on. All right, pull him up. Cassidy! Well, Mr. Hutchison, look out! Oh, he's all right, boys. I got him. Good thing we split up. Come on. Now you got him, all right. Looks like Hutchison is done for. Copy. Look what's in the hole. Yeah. Who do you reckon? The remains of my old friend Jack Bannock. I know now why he said we in that letter to his sister. He did have a partner. Hutchison. Yeah. Pretty clear now what happened 15 years ago. Jack came out here to bury his money. He didn't know he was digging his own grave. Hutchison must have done it, huh? Sure. No one to be blamed on the creed. But why did Hutchison come now and dig the body? Well, I can make a pretty good guess. He stole the letter from Miss Newcomb. Found that it contained the key to locate this spot. He knew sooner or later we'd figure it out. So he tried to get here first and move the body. But how could we prove he was the one who killed... Look here. This is your answer. 
I guess Hutchison remembered that he'd been a little careless and left his trademark in Jack's back. See? One of his little wonder push button knives. <laughs> And so an exciting adventure ends for Hoppy in California. They'll get back to the Bar 20 just about roundup time and settle down to a peaceful ranch life. But we've a hankering. It won't last for very long. Somewhere there'll be trouble, and that's when Hoppy will ride out into another dangerous escapade. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The letter from the grave was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.